All right, welcome back. It's 3DS Max 2018 Autodesk YouTube Classroom video number nine. Last time we were here, we worked on creating this treasure chest, which is linked up at the bottom. So if I hit W and drag it around, everything moves together. The lid, the hinges, everything works together. Um, I, we also adjusted the smoothing group, so it looks way smoother than it actually is. And we opened the top of the chest so that it actually pivots from the right spot. So all that stuff is really important, and we'll use it continually uh, for the rest of our time here in this class. Um, this is the basics of polygon modeling. Um, it, it's sometimes called extrusion modeling because just as you saw before, we extruded down, and usually when you create geometry off of uh, a unique piece of, of a mesh, you're going to extrude to get that geometry out. So today we're going to build the geometry for the actual gold and gems that are going to be inside. So for now, I'm going to hit T for top. And then uh, you'll notice that because of the lighting system, it, it's confusing. It doesn't actually look like we're looking at the top. But trust me, we are. For T for top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, plane. We're going to create a plane from the top. Okay. Now, we're going to keyboard entry on this plane because we know exactly how big it is and where it needs to be. So the length of the plane was going to be, uh, our length of our box is 25 or 100 units, 100 centimeters. So I'm going to make this um, 98 centimeters. And the width is going to be 50, no, or I'm sorry, let's do 48. 48 should be good. And if we create it X, Y, and Z, 0, 0, 0, um, we can actually create it up a bit. Um, I'm going to create it Z, 50. Yeah, let's make it 40. Z, 40. All right, and hit create. And then we create it. Now, the length, oh, I did the length and width backwards, but it doesn't matter. We'll rotate it. If, you're, if you want to rebuild it, you can. I'm just going to hit A for angle snap and make sure I rotate it 90 degrees. It's not a big deal. I just should have thought it through. Anyway, so we have a pink plane. And I've talked to you before about how I don't like anything red or pink because when you select the sub-objects, they turn red and pink. So I'm going to change the plane for now to gray just so I know what I'm working with. Now, because I selected something else, I don't have my modifier options here. So I need to go up to the Modify tab up here click on that and then I'm going to change the length and width segments because what I want is I want a pile of gold right I don't want it to be just like a like a flat like pool of gold I want a pile so I'm going to change the length and width segments um, which are going to con uh, conform to what it was when it first started so uh, my length segments I'm going to set to 50 and my width I'm going to set to 50 uh, I'm going to hit F where is it going? F3, F4, that's what I thought. So I'm going to hit F4 so you can see I have rectangles now, and I don't really want rectangles. I want it to be uh, squares, okay? So that means my length segments should be set differently. But remember, I turned it, so I'm going to set my width segments differently. Oh, damn it, I messed it up again. Uh, no, I didn't, did I? 100. Nope, I did mess it up. So for me, it'll be length segments 100, width segments 50. There, now I have squares. And I've got a lot. If you hit 7, you should have your options set to where tries, edges, and verts are shown. This actual plane just by itself is 10,000 tries. That's a ton, but we're going to use it. And it's still pretty low for the entire uh, uh, for the entire scene. So it's not a big deal. So for now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about soft selection. We're going to do that by isolating this object. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go up to the top where it says isolate selection. I'm pretty sure we did that with the lid before but what this does is it allows us to work with just the object with no distractions of the chest or anything else. Um, the inside of this plane, the edges of this plane are going to stay inside the box. So what we need to do now is we need to adjust this to make a pile out of it. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do it, but today we're going to talk about soft selection. So I'm going to right click on this and convert it to an editable poly like we're used to. Then 
I'm going to go over here to selection and select vertex. All right, so now I've got vertex. Now my selection type now is a square, which is not what I want for this particular use. I want to be able to grab just the inside. So I'm going to hit Q over and over until I get the spray can. You can see it up here, spray can. And now I can just do this. So I can actually grab just the inside here. So I'm selecting just the inside. Now we're going to go all the way around sort of like this and we don't want it to be like too organic uh, or, or too mechanical. So you can sort of pile it up however you want. And you don't have to go too far out either. If you hold control, you can, uh, I'm sorry, alt, you can deselect stuff. If you hold control, you can add to it. Okay. So try and find a, a nice sort of generic ovally look to it. And now what we're going to do is go to soft selection. So go over here. You should have two panels. If not, you can adjust it. Get two panels and look for soft selection. Mine is down here. I'm going to click the caret to expand it up and it moved it up here. Now I'm going to use soft selection. Now you'll notice I get a rainbow color. This means whenever I move the red parts, the other colors will move proportionally. Now you can change the way this looks over here. Um, you can adjust the edge distance. So if I change the edge distance to 2, it's only going to affect the 2 beyond the ones I've selected. And I can change that as far as I want. Eventually, it won't select anymore because of the fall off. You can adjust the fall off, and that also adjusts how many objects it's going to grab outside. And once things are selected, you don't have to stop there. You can still go back and say, all right, well, that's a little too far. Because what we want to make sure is that none of the outside edges are actually going to get selected. So if you've got something touching one of this outside edge, you want to make sure you don't have that selected. Next, we have effect back facing, which isn't a problem right now because we have a plane. But that's when you select something if it automatically affects the back facing with the distortion. Um, for now, we can leave it on. It doesn't really matter. But the pinch and the bubble are really important because bubble changes how things move. And you can see the pile of gold, I want it to look sort of like this. So it's going to be sort of bubbly and curvy at the top. If I wanted it to be pinched or like a spike, I could do that as well. But I kind of want it curvy. So I ended up with a pinch of like 0 0.02 and a bubble of, you know, 0.86-ish. It's up to you. That's that's not something you have to worry too much about. Now I'm going to deselect a little more of this so I get just the middle part. And it's okay if it's not perfect. You can even go through and deselect some of the ones on the inside too. Grab it like that. And then you can adjust the, uh, the fall off and the edge distance. I mean, my edge distance is 55, so it's not ever probably going to get that far. Anyway, once you have it where you like it, and you've got what you want, you can actually pull it up on Z. You can pull it all up at once, and that looks weird. Or you can sort of pull it up a little bit, and a little bit more, and a little bit, oops, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, until you get sort of the shape you're looking for. If you do it slowly, it'll get you much more of a bubble. Now be careful because you don't want to lose this front edge. Okay. Even still, once, once we have this, we're going to go and start relaxing it. Because right now it looks too much like a weird like pillow. And that's not what I was looking for. I want something much more angular. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control A. Go T for top change my selection with Q to get the square and I'm going to hold uh, alt and then deselect this top row deselect this bottom row and notice they're turning orange because soft selection is still on and then deselect every single one of these outside vertice edges all right now I'm going to turn off soft selection so I've just got everything in the middle but not the edge and now I'm going to go to geometry up here and relax what relax does, it sort of averages the distance between these edges. And we can do it over and over and over again until we get sort of a nice smooth curve. Like that. That's starting to look pretty good. 
I keep hitting relax and it'll keep adjusting. Now it will not touch the, the blue vert. So we know that our edge is gonna stay perfect, but we're starting to get like a more of a natural pile, something that looks pretty good. Cool. So now if we want, we can go through and hit Q a couple more times and do some more soft selection to just give it maybe some more, you know, just some more little valleys. Holding control allows you to select more pieces here and there. And these are going to be subtle bumps. And then I'm going to turn on soft selection, but turn edge distance way down like that. Make sure nothing on the outside is connected. And then I might just hit W and move him down a little bit. There. Good enough. Cool. Now I've got more of a like a different shape to it. Cool. Great. So that's good enough. Now, so this will be our goal. Now it's hard to tell because even though it's a pile, um, you can't, you know, you're going to get like different sort of piles and stuff like that. And you can even just collect a few and move them in and out and up and down. But we're going to make it look like coins later. But for now, we just want sort of this sort of curvy look to it. So now we got to change the name of it. Right now it's called plain, and we're going to call it M underscore gold. So that's good. And now if I right click and isolate, you can see that I've got the pile in there. Now if I select somewhere else, you can see that the pile is now inside there, and it looks pretty good. Kind of got some bumps and stuff. It might be a little, need a little relaxing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do just a little more relaxing. Select your uh, modify tab, hit selection, control all. I'm just going to um, go to geometry, relax it, and should, a little bit of relaxing should be okay. I don't think it's going to pull out of our edge. There. Cool. It looks, looks, lumpy enough to be a pile of gold. Great. Now, I'm going to go back to this object and I'm going to link this to the rest of the gold. So I'm going to click my gold or select and link tool, click on the gold and then click on the box. So now when I hit Q, select this, hit W and move it. Boom. It moves together. Cool. Now, gold is great, but we also want gems. So now we're going to go into our create tab, our geometry creation. Instead of standard primitive, we're going to go to extended primitives. Extended primitives are kind of cool because you can adjust. Uh, they make a bunch of neat other stuff, and you can look through all of these. But I'm going to look at the, the hedra. And that, to me, looks like a gem. So I'm going to make that hedra. Hit front view. Uh, I might make it a little smaller because that's kind of uh, kind of big. I'm just going to hit R and scale it down. Hit W, and I'm going to move it up into the chest. Maybe rotate it a little bit so it looks like it's sitting on the on the pile of gold, and then resize it so it's a little more a little more reasonable. But it, I mean, it can be huge. It's a it's a treasure chest after all. Okay, now I'm going to hold Shift, look at it from the top ish. I'm going to grab it from the Y and X axes, hold Shift and drag it over. Now this time instead of a copy, I'm going to call it an I'm going to make it an instance. Okay, an instance means whatever I do to one will automatically affect the other. So if I decide to take one of these and change it to an octa, it changes both of them. So they're both unique or they're both, you know, like connected. So this is really great if you're making tires on a car or something like that. But for now, we're just going to leave it the way it is. From the top view now, I'm going to drag this over again. And this time I'm going to make a copy. Um, this time I'm going to name it too. I'm going to call it M. Let's call it um, Emerald. E-M-E-R-A-L-D. Click OK. And this will be our green gem. This first one I'm going to call uh, M underscore Ruby 1. And this will be M underscore Ruby 2. Cool and they are linked together. And you can see that it's bolded under the modifier list because that modifier will keep it um, so they're together. But this one I'm going to change to a different type of gem because that'll be exciting. 
And they're all the same color, and that doesn't really matter. I'll make these two red for now so that I remember that they're rubies. Um, but I'll change those in a minute. And this one uh, is going to be green because that's what color emeralds are. And we'll adjust that later. Uh, and then finally, let's make uh, something else. Let's do one more fun thing. Um, let's call, let's get like a Gen Gun. That's, that's kind of cool. We've got that. And now I'm going to right click, uh, front view, right click. I'm going to convert to an editable poly. Right, so I've got my Gen Gone, which is kind of cool. Now I've got this section down here. I'm going to grab this this polygon section, and now from the front, I'm <laughs> going to use Marquee Select. So I'm going to hit R, and I'm going to select Faces, and I'm going to hold Control and select this. So I get all of this and the top. Now from here, I'm going to hold Alt. From the front again, I'm going to hold Alt and drag across the top. This will deselect all of these, but keep all of those. Then I'm going to delete by pressing the delete key. So I've got a hole. Now I'm going to grab vertices. Look at it from the front. Grab all of these together. Hit R. And I'm going to scale them so that they're all into one point. Now I've got 10 vertices selected, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a more of a diamond by selecting these vertices and, and making them into one. So I will select all 10. And now what I'm going to do is weld. When I press the weld button, they should all weld together. If they don't, you can go into settings and crank this number up, and it should weld them all together. So now I've got sort of like a diamond looking thing. You can pull this up. So now I've got a big old diamond. Okay, so I'm going to call this M for mesh underscore diamond. Hit enter. Now, if I wanted to, I can make the diamond flat on top, which is much more likely by selecting edge marquee selecting across all of these edges so I get all those edges go to loops insert loop so what I've done is I've added a new loop which means now I can take go back into vertices I'm gonna hit the number one on the number line select the top vert and move it down so it's sort of smoother like that so now I've got this sweet diamond I'm gonna go back into my view, I'm going to right uh, hit R and resize it a little bit and hit W, move it up on Z, move it over on X, and then find a good place for it in the chest. And wherever you want to put it is fine. I'll rotate it too so it looks like it's sitting in the pile. Maybe even like that. Eh, I kind of want to see the diamond shape of it, so that's cool. Great. Cool, cool, cool. So we've got our gems. They are color coded for later. Um, now what I want to do is take all of these gems, all four of these gems, and I'm going to select and link and link them all to the gold. So I'm going to get my link tool, select um, one ruby, hold control, select the other four gems, and now let go of control, hit hold left click on gems, and then let go so that it snaps to the gold. So now the gold, or the gems are linked to the gold, and the gold is linked to the box. So I should be able to hit W, move the box, and everything moves with it. So now I've got my gems and my gold geometry all done. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to set this up so that uh, the gold looks like gold and the gems are sort of see-through. Uh, so we're actually going to work with the material editor. So that's going to be pretty cool, and I hope you're excited about it. I certainly am, and we'll see you in the next video, video number 10. Have a good one.